most portraits of the country's former princely families have focused on the figure of the Maharaja while their queens remained in the shadows. An exhibition titled Maharani's Women of Royal India is currently uh, showing at the National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad. The exhibition and accompanying a book take a rare look at the lives of Maharani through a series of images captured on camera from the mid-19th to 20th centuries. Just look at her hair gently blowing in the wind and look at her dog resting. It, it is, in my terms, not very really different from a great miniature painting where you have the trees that bend over the deity and the, and the rain falling in a particular direction captured the innocence of this young princess. <laughs> Whether it was Gayatri Devi of Jaipur or Sita Devi of Kapoorthala, the camera fell instantly in love with the women of Royal India. That is again an iconic photograph. Princess of Kapoorthala, um, of course, she is not asleep, but doesn't it capture as if she is? This one is the Pearl of India, because the pearls are at risk. Capturing the expression in her eyes and capturing the attitude of her body here are unbelievable. Although photography came to India in 1839, the lens focused on the Maharajas as their queens remained in Parda. Victoria Gauramma of Kurg was the first princess to be photographed in 1854 on a visit to England with her father. While this picture of the last Mughal Empress Begum Zinat Mahal was taken in 1857 after she and her husband Bahadur Shah Zafar were imprisoned by the British. But by the turn of the century, the women of princely households had begun to enter public life and became more visible, often to empower others. The emancipation of the Indian princesses, which began with people like Sangyogita Devi of Kuch Behar, who, who was the daughter of, the, of Keshav Chandra Sen. And she, she was the lady who prevented Pagda. She, with my aunt Amrit of Mandi and Chimnabai of Baroda, were the ones who said, no more Pagda. Therefore, portraits became important. So it was, not only was it um, uh, for entertainment, it was also as a statement. By the early 1900s, the royals were increasingly traveling to the West, where the women had their pictures taken by some of the most famous photographers of the day, including Cartier Bresson and Cecil Beaton, in chiffon saris and sparkling jewels. If a princess had to appear in court in London, the king or queen and queen had to uh, recognized who they were, so that they went to Lafayette. They were, they were the photographs were taken. They were shown to their Majesty. The Majesty would say, "Ah, this is the princess of this place." Photographed in black and white on hunts, riding horses, wearing dresses, holding election rallies, and talking to villagers, these images of the women of Royal India capture their candid moments and social appearances, as they embrace the modern while retaining tradition and heritage the source of their status and power. With Sajji Lal, Pitul Sidharan and Martina Roy, Shikha Trivedi for NDTV.